So remember the concentration is a way of describing how much solute there is and how much solvent there is. So molarity is one way that we can describe the concentration of a solution and we describe how much solute there is in units of moles, moles of solute, and we describe how much solvent there is with units of liters, liters of solvent. So molarity is moles of solute per liters of solvent. But there are lots of different ways to represent the concentration of a solution, how much solute there is and how much solvent there is. So now, um, in this section, we're going to look at a couple of other units of concentration. The mass percentage of a solution is defined as the ratio of the component's mass to the solution's mass. So um, the mass percentage is the mass of a component or the mass of a solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. So uh, it would be then, because you're multiplying by 100, it would be a percentage and we'd put the percent sign at the end. We are generally most interested in the mass percentages of solutes, but it is also possible to compute the mass percentage of solvent. So we could um, uh, calculate the mass percentage, the mass of the component, in that case being mass of solvent, divided by the mass of the solution. Liquid bleach is an aqueous solution of sodium hypochlorite. This brand has a concentration of 7.4% sodium hypochlorite by mass. So that means that there's 7.4 grams of sodium hypochlorite per 100 grams of solution. The other uh, 92.6 grams are water. Volume percentage. The concentration of a solution formed by dissolving a liquid solute in a liquid solvent is often expressed as a volume percentage. So um, in the last example we were looking at bleach and sodium hypochlorite is a solid. It's an ionic compound and it comes in a bottle like a salt and you could weigh it with a spoon. Um, and put it on a balance, for example. So it might make sense to talk about the concentration of bleach as a mass percentage, how the mass of um, hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite that's in the solution. Um, but it's, it's not difficult necessarily to get the mass of a liquid, but uh, it's also easy to get the volume of a liquid. So there are lots of different ways that we can represent the quantity of a substance when we're in the lab. Weighing things on a balance is a really easy way to represent the quantity, to represent the mass, just by um, scooping some of it out and placing it on a balance. Um, for liquids, though, we have another really easy way to describe the quantity of how, how much there is, how much liquid there is, by measuring the volume. So we often choose which unit of concentration we're going to use based on um, practical aspects like what is easiest to measure of that substance. What, what properties are easy to measure when we're in the lab? Is it easy to weigh this substance? Is it easier to measure the volume of this substance? There are lots of different ways to quantify uh, the amount of something. So to calculate a volume percentage, we would just um, calculate, we would uh, divide the volume of the solute by the volume of solution, which is um, analogous to the mass percentage, the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. It's also possible to mix them, a mass volume percent. So then uh, we might be talking about the solute's mass and the solution's volume. So that might be the most appropriate of all when we're talking about um, the concentration of bleach because um, we can easily measure a solid, sodium hypochlorite, 7.4 grams, and we can easily measure the liquid, the water, as a, a volume component. So solute mass, solution volume. So um, sometimes to distinguish between these different percentages when we're talking about different uh, when we're talking about solutions and we're talking about mass percentage and volume percentage. So
Sometimes these symbols are used for a mass percentage. And these symbols um, stand for, the M here stands for mass, or sometimes W for weight. But those are symbols that are often used interchangeably for a mass percentage. When we're talking about a volume percentage, we usually use this, V over V, volume percentage. And finally, when we're talking about a mass volume percentage, sometimes it's M over V or W over V. Mass volume percentage. So you might see these symbols used, and this is what they are representing. Different percentages, different ways of uh, representing the concentration of a solution. So, for example, we don't have to use one concentration unit for a solution. Let's take that bottle of bleach. The bottle of bleach said that it was 7.4 percent mass uh, mass percentage, so 7.4 percent by mass. But we could calculate the concentration of that same solution in the bottle of bleach and represent it using any of these different units. We could calculate the molarity of the bleach. We could calculate the mass percentage of the bleach. We could calculate the volume percentage of the bleach if we can measure the volume of the sodium hypochlorite. We could measure we could calculate the mass volume percentage of that solution of bleach. So we can use any of these different units of concentration for any solution. But sometimes a unit is more practical than another. That's why I might choose to use one unit over another, um, even though it's possible to to represent the concentration of a solution using any of these units. Mixed mass volume units are commonly encountered in medical settings. The sodium chloride concentration of physiological saline is 0.9 percent mass volume, M over V. This device measures in B, this device measures glucose levels in a sample of blood. The normal range for glucose concentration in blood is around 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. So this is a, um, a unit uh, mass per volume, right? Mass milligrams over deciliters. So this is a, 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 not a percentage, not a mass volume percentage, but another way of representing a concentration, milligrams per deciliters. Here's another way, parts per million and parts per billion. So when we're talking about very low solute concentrations, it's often most appropriate to use parts per million or parts per billion. So again, we can, cal we can calculate the concentration of a solution using any of these, any solution using any unit, but sometimes it just makes more sense to use a different unit. Like when we're, we're talking about the mass of an atom, it makes more sense to talk about the mass of an atom using an atomic mass unit than it does to use grams because an atom is so small and, a, and even one gram is so much larger than an atom. So that's where parts per million and parts per billion come in when we're talking about very low concentrations. So really, um, this is parts per million and parts per billion, if you look at this, it says the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. Well, if we ignore that times 10 to the 6 on the other side, that's actually just the mass percentage, the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. And same with the parts per billion, mass of solute divided by mass of solution. In fact, if we wanted to talk about the a mass percentage here, we would say the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. And then we would be talking about a mass percentage, right? Because the word percent means per 100, because a cent is, um, is 100. Think about a century, there's 100 years in a century, or a cent, there's 100 cents in a dollar. Cent means 100. So when we're talking about percent, we're talking about per 100. So the only difference about a per, the, between a percentage and a parts per million is that instead of multiplying my final answer by 100, 
I multiply my final answer by a million. And then I'm talking about parts per million. Or I multiply my final answer by a billion. And then I'm talking about parts per billion. Another way to think about percentage is we could just say percentage is a parts per hundred. So percentage parts per hundred, I would multiply my final answer by a hundred. Parts per million, PPM, I multiply my final answer by a million.